What is going on everybody? It's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be doing a quick trading update. What am I personally doing in terms of my trading? Did I day trade today? Did I enter into any new swing trading positions? We're going to be talking about that in today's video, as well as Briefly taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I'm keeping my eyes on and that did well today. So before we do get into the topic of today's video, for everybody out there that finds value in these videos, you enjoy the content that I'm putting up here on YouTube, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you guys want me to talk about a specific stock or ETF on Sunday's video, the video in two days from now, feel free to drop a comment down below with that ticker symbol, whether it be a stock, an ETF, and I'll get to it if I see potential in it on Sunday's video. So keep an eye out for Sunday's video if you do drop a comment down below. And you can also put it in the call out section in our free Discord group chat, which is linked down below in the description box. So, without further ado, guys, let's talk about what is going on right now in the stock market. Let me quickly plug in my laptop because I seem to always forget to do that when I'm recording these videos. So right now, guys, we do have about 33 minutes left in the market, so we will see some action live here. But the S&P 500 today, the entire market in general, has been on an absolute tear. The S&P is up right now nearly 27 points, up about 0.92%. Very beautiful move here today. In terms of the 500 largest U.S. publicly traded companies, the Dow Jones Industrial Average up 0.77%, a pretty solid 203-point day so far with about 33 minutes left in the market. And hopping over here to the NASDAQ, guys, an absolute killer day so far, up nearly 1.5%, up $112.25 at the time that I'm recording this video. So, the markets today, again, absolutely unbelievable. A lot of the large cap stocks, I know my face is here, but Netflix is up 5 bucks today. Microsoft up another 250 Google's up 20 points. Facebook had a killer day right so far. Amazon, you know, even Apple's doing very well right now. A bunch of these big name stocks, they're doing very, very well, right? Specifically the tech stocks, which is why... Hence why the NASDAQ is doing very well compared to the other ones that we are seeing here. So let's just go to the S&P very quickly. We'll break down some technicals. And what I said in yesterday's video will also follow up on that, right? So we noticed... Over the past couple of days, for those of you all that have been paying attention to the markets and especially to my videos here on YouTube, we were talking about the big sell-off that the SPX had, right? We saw the Federal Reserve meeting on Wednesday. From there, it kind of spooked the market a bit. Right, the market fell from 2953 all the way down to 2900 flat in the span of two days. And at that point, guys, we were talking about how the SP was at a critical support on a couple of different time frames. Right, we talked about how the sell off brought us to this a 180 simple moving average support on the one hour or the 20 day one hour chart, rather. Right, the sell off also brought us to the 50 simple moving average support here on the 180 four hour chart. So this the sell off brought us to a support level on multiple different time frames which was very good. And we noticed how towards the end of uh yesterday, right, towards the after hours yesterday, the S&P 500 was slowly forming a green bullish candlestick on top of the 50 simple moving average, which was very good, right? This was telling me that, okay, this could be this point in time where we're, you know, consolidating, showing support on this level, and this could be really one step away from the confirmation of the continuation of the uptrend, right? So this first step was first seeing support, which we did yesterday, and the second step, obviously, would be to pop up, to gap up, which we ended up seeing this morning. So as of now, now, guys, it really looks like the S&P wants to hit another all-time high. We see the all-time high here at about 29.54. It looks like it's heading up there 
for this upcoming week. I doubt it's going to hit it in this video, right, in the next 30 minutes. That would be absolutely unbelievable, right? You really can't ever say never, but I don't think it's going to hit it today. But for sure, next week, I think there's a big possibility that we do end up continuing and end up breaking out of the resistance, which was, or which is rather, 2954 again, that previous all time high that we made a couple of trading days ago. So everything is looking pretty solid right now for the continuation of the uptrend on the SPX. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, guys, we were talking about this particular trend right here yesterday. Remember this trend line that I ended up drawing out in the videos? We were talking about how the Dow Jones sold off from the 26,700 level. We saw the double top there. We sold off. We were trying to hold above 26,400. This support level here ended up breaking that one. But the good thing that we did saw or see rather or saw what what's the what's the grammar on that? The good thing we saw the good thing we saw is that we ended up holding the 26. 200 level yesterday and if we look on the five day five minute we can see that exactly right we gap down gap down 26 200 roughly we ended up closing the day on an upswing and then we gapped up aggressively this morning confirming the bounce at around 26,200 right confirming that very nice bounce and that bounce happened to be at the support level at 26 200 and at a higher low illustrated here by this trend line meaning the up trend is 100% still intact for the Dow and we can see today guys we broke out of the 26400 resistance and we're back in that channel horizontal channel from 26400 that level being a new support now and 26800 which is the resistance near this level up here that we need to break out of for us to test, ultimately test those all-time highs from back in October, which are nearly 27,000 for the Dow Jones Industrial Average Index here. So that's it for the Dow, guys. Pretty solid day. The, up, the uptrend is continuing. Very nice movement there. And hopping over here to the NASDAQ, guys, this one's pushing up even further from where we started off this video absolutely beautiful move here. So notice how the all-time highs from back in October 2018 were roughly 7725-ish, roughly 7700 right around here, right? Notice how that's where exactly where we ended up holding above today. We bounced from there, made that 1.5% move to where we are right now in the Nasdaq. So very solid move here, bounced on that support. We were talking about that being a very critical level and the fact that we bounced on that that level we're pushing up to an all-time high close to an all-time high that's confirming in my eyes right through my technical analysis here that the nasdaq is continuing the upswing right we're pushing at a higher low here and we want to potentially get to another all-time high so take a look if i draw a quick little um upwards trend line here take a look at this guys um actually probably from here it would illustrate it better but if we do something like that Take a look at where we ended up bouncing, right? Perfectly on that trend line that I just drew for you all. And again, we're continuing the uptrend. So there's really not much um, other than what I just talked about. Nothing else to cover, honestly, guys. This is all looking dandy, right? This is all looking great. We got the jobs report today. Very, very solid data from that. That could be, in my personal opinion, a catalyst to the market's um, growth today, right? Very, very big catalyst to the growth that we're experiencing today. And everything's just looking really good right now, guys. But don't let all this stuff cloud your judgment, right? Don't let this, you know, fool you in terms of us pushing up forever, right? Understand how... There's going to be a time period, no one knows when, but there's going to be a time period where we are going to see another big correction. I'm not saying it's going to be this big, right? This was nearly 20% drop here in the NASDAQ and the overall market. But this, you know, guys, this push that we're seeing here in 2019, this is not going to go on for the whole year, for the next two years, right? There's going to be a point in time, that's all I'm saying, that we're going to see maybe a 10 15%, 8% retracement where this can end up coming back down to here, right? This could end up coming back down to 7,200, 7,300. So don't just really just, just be mindful of that. That's all I'm trying to say here. So that is all 
for today's market update, guys. Let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think about this. I would love to know what you all have to think about this. So let's talk about what I ended up doing today in terms of my trading. So not much in terms of the day trading side on in terms of the day trading side of things, but I ended up opening up a swing position like I'm sure you saw in the title on Google stock guys. So let's talk about Google stock very quickly towards the beginning of this trading uh, update section of the video. Google stock is one that I've been watching due to the big pullback that we saw after earnings, right? They didn't report too great of an earnings. And I was talking about how this, in my opinion, was opening up a pretty solid swing opportunity on one of the biggest companies out there in the entire world. That one being Alphabet Inc., also known as Google, also known as ticker symbol G-O-O-G. And what I told you guys and what I've been saying in these videos was that I want to see right a bit of consolidation and a bit of a bottom being formed in Google before I at least add a 10-15% position into it right and by that i mean when i'm doing swing trading guys you know with these large cap companies especially you know i'm not hopping in with a hundred percent of my goal position right off the bat right so let's say for google for example i'm not hopping in with let's say my goal position is twenty thousand dollars right i'm not hopping in right away with twenty thousand dollars i would scale in with let's say maybe four thousand dollars at first right which would be twenty percent of my goal position so in this way, in this case, right, if it ends up going down initially, right, let's say it ends up plummeting or something like that, I wouldn't lose as much money as I would have if I went in with that full $20,000, right? I hope that makes sense to you guys. It's kind of like mitigating risk in a way and being cautious and preserving capital, right? It's not me being greedy, trying to just bet the farm on a trade, right? I'm being really just just really cautious conservative and really just preserving the capital that's the whole entire one of the whole entire ideas and goals of trading is not to just blow your account right on one trade not saying that google will end up blowing my account i'm just saying this is the mindset that I'm taking with every single trade or the mindset going through my head with every single trade that I'm taking, right? So we saw the big uh, the big sell-off in Google that opened up about 10% margin and it seems like we are finding a bottom here at about 1160, right? We can see on the five-day, five-minute chart if we zoom in a bit, right? We were talking about how over these past couple of videos, we didn't really find a bottom quite yet because we were forming lower lows every single day, right? The the uh, the 50 SMAs, the uh, the 180 SMA here on the five day five minute chart, they were acting as resistance points. But what do we see here, guys? With the markets doing well today, Google ended up breaking out of those levels of resistance, the 50 and the 180, and now we're starting to see a reversal to the upside. Not only are we seeing a bullish cross of the 50 over the 180 in terms of the simple moving averages. We're also seeing the candlesticks holding those levels as a new support, which is a very good sign as well. So I noticed this this morning, guys, when we ended up gapping up pretty aggressively up to 1170 from the uh, close at about 1159 yesterday. And this is where I ended up taking a position in Google. Again, I'm in with a smaller portion of my goal position, about 20% with this position. And I do plan on adding more money once and if we break above $1,200. That's my next goal target right now on Google. That's what I'm looking to do right now. I'm comfortable. I'm up about 1% on my position. Nothing crazy. Just looking to add some more at about 1200 And from there, guys, every $15, $20 that we go up, I'm looking to scale into it more and more. And based off my analysis, guys, this is looking to be, if everything goes as planned, Probably a three week, maybe one month, two month swing trade, you know, as it does slowly start to recover, right? And let's say we end up popping up aggressively and we end up going to hypothetically now, guys, let's say we end up going up five, ten or five, six percent in the matter of a week. I, at that point, I'd probably just take my profits for a very quick gain. But judging off the previous movements on Google, right, it's not a straight shooting up stock. We see a little bit of movement 
followed by a pullback, right? A little bit of movement followed by a pullback, which is why I think it's going to take a bit longer on this one for it to recover and for me to coop up that 5, 6, 7, 8% roughly that area uh, of percentage that I do want to grab for profit. So Google, guys, that's the number one new one that I ended up adding to the position, uh, to the portfolio, portfolio rather, today. Some other ones that I'm already in that are doing pretty well today, very well, mind you, are Facebook, right? I was in Facebook at around 193. Facebook is doing very well today, and it seems like it is holding that 195 level that I want it to close at so badly and for it to maintain this 195 level as a new support before trucking back up to the high 190s and possibly cracking into the $200 level roughly where I want to add more money and I've been talking about this over the past couple of videos guys that every time it seemed like we got to the 195 level we sold off right 195 sold off 195 sold off we tried to get back this day, sold off, but today, with the market being strong, we got the 196, we're selling off, and it seems like we're maintaining 195 um, you know, right now towards the close of the market. Let me show you guys very quickly here. See, take a look at that. Resistance, resistance, resistance. Now we're maintaining it as a new support, and now I just want to gap up to 198. Hopefully next week we can fill that gap. Let me know down below in the comment section if you think Facebook will. I think there's a high likelihood that it does, especially if the markets do very well since Facebook's a large cap company. Off the top of my head, don't quote me on this. I forget exactly. I haven't really checked it in a while, but I think their market cap is around... 200 billion I think roughly that area last time I did check but that doesn't really matter all I'm just trying to say is the bigger the market cap the more it gets affected by overall market fluctuations in terms of the you know the S&P NASDAQ um, you know Dow whatever right so that's what I'm doing in terms of Facebook and the other one Procter and Gamble guys Procter and Gamble ended up doing or it's doing pretty good today right yesterday I was talking about how I still think there's more upside in Procter and Gamble I got a question yesterday do you think Procter and Gamble is going to go up on Friday which is today when I'm recording this video I said yes right because if we're just looking at this five day five minute pattern here or let's look at the 10-day, 30-minute pattern very quickly. What do we notice here, guys, on Procter & Gamble? There's a very, very critical and kind of predictable pattern it's been on. One day it pops up, followed by a pullback the next day. Pops up, followed by a pullback, pops up, followed by a pullback. And this one wasn't a full pop-up to a higher high, which is why I thought it would continue to push up, right? Which it's, it's doing right now, but we didn't end up popping to a higher high, which in my opinion, right, with this little pullback that we're seeing here, we might end up having another green day on Monday for Procter & Gamble to push to a higher high past 106.50 before we see another retracement in the stock. That's kind of what I'm thinking right now. So let me draw that out for you and show you what can end up happening, right? Let's say this gray area is Monday. Monday, for example, for, um, you know, hypothetical right here, you know, we could end up doing something like that, right? Potentially where we hop up to 107 from this pullback that we're seeing heading into market close. And then Wednesday or Tuesday, rather, we could end up seeing a little bit of a, of a retracement here, continuing the pattern that we're on. That's probably, I'm not saying it's going to happen 100%. But based off this previous pattern that I'm seeing, you know, that's probably, in my personal opinion, again, do your own research, what's going to happen with Procter and Gamble. So that's it, guys. Honestly, those are the three main swing positions that I'm in right now. Might as well talk or really um, bring to light. You guys already know this if you've been following me for a couple of weeks, months at this point. But Neo stock is actually one of my spec plays that I got in a couple of weeks, months ago at this point and neo is doing very very well today believe it or not it's up six percent it's up from the one day one minute it popped up very quick up to 511 so i don't know exactly i didn't really do too much research into it but neo there's definitely a catalyst here that popped the stock up neo has laid off 70 employees and closed an office in silicon valley i don't know how that can surge the stock but what i'm seeing here on live news 
all the news that we're seeing that was from yesterday so that couldn't be the catalyst there's definitely some catalyst here that i have to look into but i thought i'd mention it here during the trading portion of this video because this is one that i'm in again it's a spec play i, I literally literally only have like five six hundred bucks in this i put an amount of money that i'm willing to lose 100 percent literally like if this money left my account like i wouldn't even notice it and it's just kind of a fun stock to just follow fun stock to just put a little bit of money in and see where it goes right i don't really recommend people to do that or really you can do that if you want to play with some stocks if and only if you are willing to lose that money 100 which again i'm willing to lose my money here on neo it's just a spec play guys so i figured i'd just mention it here due to it being um you know popping up very aggressively to be quite frank and one one step um, to the upside here would break us out of the 180 SMA resistance and that would be a very interesting move on NEO in terms of a technical basis. So that's it for the trading portion of the video guys. Let's just quickly hammer out some stocks that are doing very well today and again drop a comment down below if you guys want me to talk about any ticker symbols for Sunday's video. Let me know down below in the comment section right now. Drop that comment and I'll get to it if I see potential, potential, oh my God, these burps, guys, potential in the stock. So, okay, we talked about Google, right? That's the number one one that I'm interested in swing trading. Procter & Gamble and Facebook. So there's no need to go into those in terms of technicals. But let's talk about Tesla today, guys. This stock is absolutely on a tear these past two days. We can see today it's up another $10, up 4.3% here. And we're struggling now at this point to get above this 257, 256, 258 ish level of resistance. So this upcoming week, guys. This is a level to keep an eye on for Tesla, right? We need to see for the uptrend to start here. We need to see um, a 260 break and hold, in my personal opinion. And for us to test, like I've been saying over these past couple of months, I know I sound like a broken record at this point, but for Tesla to start and get out of this downwards channel trend that we've been in, we just simply need to break out of these moving averages, guys. You know, whether, you know, some big news about Tesla comes out, you know, some production, they beat on production, right? The next earnings, they do very well. We just need some catalyst at this point to just get us out of this level. And from there, I think this is going to be a great, great swing trade um you know if we do get out of those technical levels so another one that i wanted uh wanted to talk about and kind of just go over again is at v this is one that reported earnings yesterday right but it's not really showing much of a movement to the upside here but one thing to just keep an eye on guys is are we going to truck back up into the 48 dollar level on at v if we do on a technical basis that would be very good because we're seeing if we do end up doing that, we'll be getting out of this resistance, maintaining it as a new support, and then slowly starting to truck up to the next resistance, which is at about $51.30. So at V, A T V I, definitely one to keep an eye on. I got a question actually on 3M, 3M company. This one's kind of in the same situation as Google, right? Ticker symbol G O O G. But the difference here is. 3M hasn't quite yet, in my opinion, found a bottom, right? If we're going to the 20-day, one hour, we're still seeing the straight-on resistance from the 50 SMA, right? The EMAs, everything is just pushing this one down on 3M. So we need to see a full-on break out of this level, maybe into the 190 levels, maybe into the 195 levels, before considering it a bottom and a full-on reversal to the upside. So 3M, I think this is, a, again, a very similar scenario to Google. I think this one can offer a great swing opportunity if and only if we do end up popping back up. So let's talk about Disney very quickly, ticker symbol DIS. 
This one's been selling off aggressively, guys. We're starting to see a new support roughly at about 133, 134. So if we end up holding this level, reverse to the upside, maybe to 136, 137, this can also be a good opportunity for Disney. So I'm going to end off the video here, guys. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Again, it really supports me and supports the channel in general. If you want me to talk about a stock an ETF in the next video. Again, drop a comment, the ticker symbol. I'd be glad to talk about that. And if you're not subscribed to the channel already, hit that red button, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you're notified every time that I do make a video. I'll catch you all in the next video. I appreciate every single one of you watching the content. It means a lot to me. Peace out, guys. Have a good one. Great weekend. I'll see you all in the next video.